Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another live stream artist chat this Tuesday on the Living Room Community Art Studios Instagram channel. Hello, hello. Nice to see folks tuning in. And what is this, you might ask? Well, every Tuesday we like to connect with another artist or maker in our community, which now includes a kind of global community as we're connecting with more folks virtually online and just chat, really just talk to them about what they're doing, what their creative process looks like, what they've been working on, what kind of challenges they might be facing and what helps them get through. It's super informal and we just like having fun. We go all over the place. If you have questions and you'd like to ask them, please do. Uh, sometimes when we get into the chat, it can be hard. I get a little bit distracted with my guests. So be patient, keep asking, and we'll be there for you. Okay, so uh, what do we have for you today? Well, this is a person we talked to early on and once uh, everything kind of shut down due to the pandemic. Uh, they are uh, an excellent human being, a fabulous creator. In fact, you might remember the first time we talked to them, we actually out-timed Instagram. We got cut off because we got caught up in the conversation we were having. So I promise today uh, that won't happen, you know, We'll, we'll try to stay on topic and not go on any delicious tangents. Okay, there might be a few, just a, t a couple of tiny tangents, uh, but we're happy to have them back. And this time we can archive it for our YouTube channel where we post and share all our live stream artist chats from the Tuesdays. Uh, but for now, why don't I introduce you? We have Bridget B. Noonan. Uh, I know them as B. I'm so happy they've agreed to come back and chat with me. Let's invite them on. All right. And again, thanks and hello to everyone who's joining us. Oh, come on. Oh, me and technology. There we go. Yeah, we might go on a tangent, B. That's true. Here we go. Yeah, let's go. The tangents are the best. Why wouldn't you want to go on a tangent, right? You can learn all that. Oh, hey. hey. Oh, my goodness. It's so good to see you. <laughs> it is fabulous to see you. I'm so happy. And thank you so much for coming back and chatting with us again. I love your hair. Thank you. It's it's faded a bit. I accidentally uh, had a warm shower instead of a cold one. Okay. And uh, yeah, that too hot of water. And it's like, oh, goodbye hair dye. <laughs> I know that's what yeah. we were chatting about in the, the live stream pop-up art studio last week. It's funny, the kind of creative... Uh, things that you get chatting about with folks during times like these and hair is one of the ways we express ourselves absolutely so why not hair why not hair yeah oh. oh wow okay so a lot has happened since the last time we talked with you oh yeah how the heck are you how's your heart how is my heart um you know today's a pretty good day you know i uh, went for a wee walk about this morning uh, walked over to my sponsor's place to have a cup of coffee and, uh, you know. Excellent. Talk a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where did I put my cup? I oh, if you want to go grab it, you can. If you want to run. I can, I can chat to folks, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, that's <laughs> sure. <laughs> what? Caffeine is necessary. <laughs> so you've had a lovely day so far? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've had to close up all the windows, unfortunately, because uh, the groundskeeping folks at my apartment are all heavy machinery, lots of grass cutting. I have no idea what's happening out there. I gotta be real. They're doing. I, yeah, I'm not a gardener. I mean, I try really hard, but I kill all my plants. <laughs> well, I keep hoping to have someone on in the future who is uh, like a a gardening artist so maybe they'll be able to help once we get them on so we'll see i'll keep working yeah that'd be so good <laughs> uh, help i don't know how to keep a plant alive it turns out you can overwater things i didn't know i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> there are so many different skill sets in this creative world you know we don't have to we don't have to like all of them and we don't certainly we certainly don't have to be you know good at all of them so this is true there you go. You know, well, my expertise does not lie in gardening. <laughs> and that's okay. Absolutely fine. <laughs> now, uh, again, there might be folks watching who aren't as familiar with you, who don't know you as well as I do. Uh, and also there might be things that you've 
uh, kind of added into the mix of your artist self over the last six months since uh, last time I saw you. How would you describe yourself? How would you like to introduce yourself to folks who are watching today? Hmm. Well, folks, hi, my name's B. Um, I always, there's always that moment of like, I, I introduce myself a lot um, in 12 step meetings. So usually that follows up with, and I'm an alcoholic, um, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> But not always the way you want to introduce yourself as an artist. Oh, well. Well, that's interesting. We've talked about this before. I mean, it depends on comfort level. It depends on how you integrate that into your life and your work. Yeah, we can come to that. Okay, we'll, we'll revisit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll come back around to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do a lot of, um, as an artist, I work with um, mostly uh, calligraphy and uh, fiber arts. So like, uh, cross stitch embroidery things like that mm -hmm. um lately i've been getting into making really beautiful um hand lettered uh cards for folks whether that be like birthday cards um condolence cards lately um have been kind of a big biz <laughs> for me uh sorry that's yeah huh. but you know um and uh working with mm -hmm. I've been working with the fabulous Danny Crosby, uh, doing some lettering with them, which is so cool. Um, cause Danny is an incredible artist. Um, but yeah, just a, a lot, a, lately a lot of hand lettering. I just picked up some gorgeous vellum from, uh, Greece. There we go. Yeah. Uh, they, the loose sheets, man, you just pick up a couple and play. Yeah. It's so smooth. <laughs> So just continuing developing all those skills and uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, it's, it's, it's an, an interesting, interesting reminder of the times we're in and how precious life is. Uh, yeah, no. And one way to yeah, I mean, skills to bring meaning to the things that are going on. Absolutely. And I mean, a lot of, um, I like to make cards specifically because I find personalizing that to each person is really important for me. Um, you know, whether I, I use a, a couple of similar sort of um, Palmer style um, handwriting um, and then I just make it fancy. Um, or, you know, I develop a couple, like I see a cool script and I'm like, I wonder how I can make that mock. Nice. you know that sort of thing yeah um, well where you know it's a it's a, something i love about the work you do it's sometimes unexpected when first feet like when people first meet you i think right uh yeah. and it has something to do with one of the things i love about you as a human and a creator is kind of the way you challenge people's expectations and their assumptions about what you know what people are who people are supposed to be uh and and there is this beautiful honesty that you come with, this, this sense of owning everything that you are, everything you've been through, the process yeah. moving through currently that haven't, you know, the work in process piece, like how we are all that. Um, you own that in every, every day, every way of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's, I don't know any other way to be, which is, I mean, well, I do know other ways to be, and I'm not as good at that, uh, making that work, mm. you know, uh, lying to myself has not gone well in the past. So being as honest with myself and by extension, other people is, is what keeps me myself, I guess. Um, you know, creating myself basically every day. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of, which takes, uh, I, I, I mean, when I think of that and how I use that as well, it also takes kind of a checking in with yourself every day, like an evaluating of where am I right now? So not taking any moment for granted, not getting caught up in the the sweep, you know, of, of life, you know. Uh, and I think sometimes that's healthy. It's hard, but it's it's healthier in the end, I think, for anyone, whether you're an artist or whether you consider yourself an artist or not. I don't know yeah. about that. For sure. I mean, you know, there's... There's always that element of, you know, folks, you look at me and you see the purple mohawk 
Mm -hmm. and you don't think oh, this one does cross stitch, <laughs> you know, this one does very technical and elegant calligraphy. Yeah. You'd think, so where's your bass, man? Uh, <laughs> you know, where's your drum set? Which, don't get me wrong, I love playing music. Uh, not always great at it. I, one of the, part of the zine I'm, I'm going to be making uh, over the next couple weeks uh, there is a, a section in it, uh, which I've called an incomplete list of careers I thought I'd have. Love it. Uh, one of which is trombone player in a ska band, which <laughs> would have been awesome. <laughs> the ska revival of the early 2000s was fantastic. Uh, and I was just starting to go to bars then and seeing all these excellent ska bands playing like punk rock with horns. I'm so here for it. Ugh, so cool. So let's talk that? about that project a little bit. And what do you think? Well, before we get to your zine project, because I want to, I want to dive into that. I want to learn all about it. What do you think about the resurgence of zine making within the past six months? Something interesting has happened. I don't know. Um, I've been doing a little research around it, uh, but something with the pet, like with the pandemic hitting and people being isolated. Uh, we hadn't really heard about zines in a long time, other than, you know, from those hardcore zine lovers who are, you know, always committed. But it's made a comeback. And there are so many amazing projects coming forward of collaborations, mail-ins, you know, all sorts of different things. Why do you think that is? Why have zines suddenly come up in consciousness again for everyone? I think in times of, like, turmoil and things like that, folks this may be my own personal bias because it's something I love to do, but when things are hard, people need to create in whatever way, you know, it's just, it's like zines came up and like that, that home making stuff, like everyone was baking bread, everyone <laughs> you couldn't find flour at the store for months. And, you know, folks find their ways to create and zines are a fantastic way of self-expression, at least in my mm. humble opinion. Um, you know, um, that self-expression, it's all very, you know, you can customize a zine for whatever your interest is. So like in the early days of zines in the 30s, you know, uh, the fanzines were all about like science fiction and stuff like that. And, you know, when you get back to the 80s and 90s, um, you know, a lot of the zines, popular zine culture was all surrounded around, you know, the Riot Girl movement and stuff like that. And so and there was a lot of difficult things happening in those times that I think people needed to, I guess, have that self-expression in a very individualistic way. You know what I mean? The way a zine really is your heart, you know? That's a, uh, that piece about the zine being your heart, it's also occurring to me that might, there might be people watching who aren't familiar with the term zine as well because we've moved away from self-publishing because there's blogs and vlogs and we do things like this now and live stream stuff and the, we can connect in so many new ways that we didn't have back you know back in the day um you're getting lots of compliments on your hair and hello to everyone who's joining us welcome uh but there is something about that that uh like so how okay how would you describe a zine to someone um a self-published uh miniature magazine um on a specific topic that is close to one's heart yeah you know yeah so you know there's a lot of it's very diy um you know it's very interesting because it, in the now times yeah uh folks are doing like digital zines and i haven't really gotten into those yet but folks just they do a lot of digital art and yeah. put it together and somehow make a zine out of that, which is so cool. Yeah. Um, I'm very much of the old school in the zine loving. I want to put it together by hand, like cut out pictures from, I don't know, like a National Geographic or something and collage that in interspersed with like fun words and cut out pieces from magazines to create like, looking like ransom note stuff in there, you know? <laughs> oh, uh, Look at this lovely comment here just before it's like, I just started making zines this year and it's so, so empowering. Yes, to bypass all the perceived barriers to sharing information, creativity, self-expression. Yeah, absolutely. It's so cool. Yeah. Because 
like large scale publishing is so hard to get into. You know, I I first made my first like zine chat book of my own poetry. Yeah. Um, and I sold it out of wasted space. Um, and at poetry shows like poetry slams and stuff like that around Oshawa and Whippy and, and the surrounding area. Yeah. And like trading them with people. Um, you know, and it was very much like a labor of love. And there's an intimacy uh, to it as well. Like, especially, I, again, like online zines, like, that's fantastic. But even the online zines might have options to print out because there's this delightful thing that happens when you, let's say you like, you mail someone a zine, a zine you get a zine in the mail. I'm going to get really, it's going to, the word zine is going to start sounding really strange to me any moment now. It is. It does. Um, but there's something about holding it in your hands. There's something about the process, like you said, of putting it together and having an opportunity to lay things out the way you want that makes sense and feels right to you. Mm -hmm. Literally telling your story in a way that feels right to you, taking control of that story, whatever that story is, right? Um, that's a really beautiful thing. And it's simple. You don't need a lot of stuff to do one, do you? No. Um, I've seen folks literally just a couple pieces of printer paper, yeah. um, a Sharpie, and some staples. And off you go. You um, heard me to link, look, look through some of the zines I've had here forever. The living room created a couple of zines in the beginning, and now I want to get back to that. So like there's yes. like these that we made, some fancy color copied ones. I know, they're so cool. With like different kinds of like everything, like oddball things. Yeah. Writing Rainbow, of course, used to make zines. What else do I have here? Some paper pockets. Ooh. I got uh, Montreal. Let's see. Trash Panda Rescue 101. I could just have a whole stream where I'm just showing stuff like this, I suppose. But oh, and even like you get a little upper scale and then you get to things like this, which is lovely. Resist, grab back. I know it's backwards for everyone out there. I apologize. Maybe I'll take a picture and share some. But uh, every possible subject, every possible, like whatever's in your mind, whatever it is, you can put it out there and see what, you know, arrange it. I mean... The reason that Star Trek even exists, it was going to be canceled. Yeah. You know, but there were so many fanzine creators, mostly women, by the way. Mm, we saved Star Trek and therefore the science fiction genre. You're welcome. Um, but there was so many, there was a letter writing campaign. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all these folks kind of got together and were like, no, we love this. Yeah. And wrote in and were like, no, Joe, like Gene Roddenberry, you need to make more of this show and Michelle Nichols and like inspired so many folks to keep dreaming and like personally I love that Star Trek future you know where science and exploration and you know creativity and curiosity egalitarianism go you know you don't need to make money you just need to live man <laughs> replicators oh my gosh my life would be so much better if i could just go earl gray tea hot <laughs> <laughs> hang, in there, hang in there who knows maybe that day's on its way <laughs> oh my gosh the second i heard about 3d printers i was like <gasps> star trek is real <laughs> well that's a, an interesting piece because i think sometimes the handmade cu culture like diy as i know it which comes from like more punk roots more resistance roots uh, even though like you can look at it in a way like i uh <laughs> community cookbooks right like those that's yeah. in culture as well isn't it like someone yeah. you know putting their words into action creating something that means meaning like has sense makes meaning for them and sharing it with everyone uh but i think sometimes that world is at considered at odds with technology and i don't think they have to be at odds do they like 3d printing is an extension of that world just using different tools to do what they need to do exactly you know it's it's all about you know, folks seem to have this weird dichotomy, you know, everyone wants binaries, it's so weird to me, but, um, you know, art is on one side, science is on the other, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Science is beautiful and creative, and there are aspects to art that need rules, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you can't, you can't separate them so, so distinctly. Yeah. Um, and you know, a questioning that both have the common ground for me is questioning and exploring and you know trying things like transforming things seeing what what if what if this 
What if we combine this? What if we ask this? What if we seek out this or learn this? I love that. So awesome. So, and yeah, I think like zines get in the ground floor of those questions. Yes. Um, you know, what, what is this particular topic mean for me? Yeah. What do and I I'm right about it. Yeah. What do I have to say? What if I shared this with the world? Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about your zine then? What, what to expect and where we'll be able to find it? Is it something, because I suppose you don't have to share your zine. No one has to share their zines with the world, but. Uh... I'm probably going to run off a couple copies. Um, I, I think I'm going to stick to print based because um, I have this, you know, anachronistic love of print. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, probably not going to be digital. Um, yeah, probably just going to trade them with people for stuff. Like, you bought me a cup of coffee. Here, have a zine. You know? <laughs> um, and, right? Dude, if you offer me coffee, I'll do a great number of things. <laughs> you know, feed me dinner, and I'm like, do you need your yard, like, <laughs> mowed? Whatever. I'm not a good mower, but I'll try. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I never learned to do yard work, man. I lived in a townhouse that had, like, a yard work team people shovel your driveway I'm good at that you know but stuff like that like I the DIY nature for me mm. you know I prefer like a barter system when it comes to this stuff you know mm. I don't really want to money sure great but you know trades of interesting objects you have a cool rock here have a zine you know okay um and so probably gonna make a couple hundo run them off um probably at the library actually <laughs> The home of homemade zines everywhere. The public <laughs> library. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, I love the library, by the way. The fact that it's open again. It's a nice thing. It's a very good thing for so many reasons. Yeah. Like the, so many reasons. Show your librarian some love, folks. Show your librarian some love. Yeah. Use your local library. Use it or lose it. Yeah. Okay, so your zine then. Right. right. So my zine is going to be called B and the art of life in the darkness hmm. and i'm basically going to answer this question what's your story and and it's self-directed so what's my story yeah story of the bee um you know just fun facts and wisdom things like i've got a i've asked a couple folks like what's your favorite song that helps you get motivated to do stuff you know and i'm making a little playlist you know um finding stuff that brings you joy like i love bird watching which again you know it's it runs against type if you look at my aesthetic and then you see me sitting in a park with a pair of binoculars being like oh, is, that a, is that a ruby throated uh, hummingbird yes check on my bird list you know like I'm going to make a list of common Southern Ontario backyard birds. And if I can find some cool photos that'll run off while I'm black and white, you know, uh, some recipes for my favorite tea blends that I make at home, you know, like very, you know, make your own fun kind of stuff. Yeah. Make your own, um, you know, if you can't, uh, if you can't make your own serotonin, <laughs> store-bought is fine. Absolutely. <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. You so know, the the darkness element there, how do you, how do you, how will that be shown, do you think? I think in telling parts of my story that have not been that weren't fun while I was living them, but I learned a lot from hmm. um like little mini articles being like, Hey, so here's something I went through, but I survived. And I learned a lot from it, you know, like Addiction and mental illness are the, the tend to be the dark spots that I'm more willing to talk about, weirdly enough. Um, you know, uh, I tend to stay away from some of the other um, dark spots in my life just because some of it's still too, you know, yeah. hurts the heart to talk about. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, inextricably linked with uh, the early part of me uh, going through, you know, uh, coming out of that addiction part 
is, you know, the death of my mom and how that motivated me to be like, okay, I got to get serious about this. I can't keep drinking because I got to look after her. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, that's probably going to feature as well being like grief doesn't look the same for everyone. You know, sometimes grief motivates you to make really good changes in your life. You know, um, because I mean, this is one part that folks uh, do uh, I do talk about quite a bit. Is you know, my mom was like, "If you drink again, I will haunt you," and she was serious. Any time in the past, like right after her funeral, there was a time where I was like. Maybe one beer won't hurt. And literally, a painting flew off the friggin' wall in the next room. Both cats were in the same room as me. And I'm like, sorry, Mom. I won't do it. I won't do it, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, that's one of those... That's a motivator for me. Because I want her to be proud of me. Um, and my life. You know? Um, like, I don't want to go back to being the person I was when I was drinking all the time, you know? Yeah. Um, Because I wasn't, I thought I was a great poet at the time, but I go back and read some of the stuff and I'm like, I could do so much better now. Yeah. You know, I've learned so much more. I've, I've kind of deepened my relationship with having emotions, uh, which is interesting, right? (laughs) Because, I mean, folks, I think, tend to see resilience as being able to bounce back from difficult situations and and feelings and stuff like that. Yeah. For me, resilience is less bouncing and more building, Mm -hmm. you know? Tell me more, if you want, not the boss of you. Yeah. (laughs) That's kind of what we're here for. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well yeah i mean like uh yeah it's it's building routines and 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 skills that help you be your best you mm. uh, and so when tough things happen it takes you less time to rebuild you know yourself um when things kind of shake your foundations you can simply like okay shaken but not destroyed you know yeah um, i rebuild parts of myself so freaking many times that i'm like are there any original parts left <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah where did you find like with that that creative the original parts that's part of the resiliency too i wonder if yeah i i couldn't agree with you more it's not a bounce back kind of thing it's not a shiny and perfect you know kind of thing it's about it's the hard work it's the hard work feeling familiar and maybe more comfortable through those difficult times yeah uh and it's also about perhaps even like reconnecting or connecting for the maybe the very first time with what that original part of us is like who is that part that we that makes it worth all the work yeah like like you know um i loved painting and coloring and that sort of stuff when I was like little little yeah Uh, because my mom was a painter um she you know like watercolor oils acrylics you name it she paint it um and like a lot of the stuff we did with her when I was small was like y'all remember white rose that place was excellent it had these little like ceramic figurines (laughs) um and we would paint those it's like from November 1st till like December 22nd, we would paint either like the little houses and make our Christmas village and paint little uh, ceramic uh, like Christmas ornaments and give them to our friends and put them on our tree and stuff. And that was like the best time. And I remember thinking about that like not too long ago, being like, well, I really love painting. Like, why don't I do it more? You know, so I... Uh, I, I was never really a watercolor person, but I, I painted up a little watercolor scene. Beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, it's it's so much fun. And I didn't, 
it's not that I didn't remember, but it's more that sometimes even the the fun creative parts still have a little sting. Mm. Yeah. Well, this is that process of grief, right? Which in an ongoing process, there's pain. Hum yep. Human pain. Real, real human pain. Yeah, and it's a, a fairly universal sort of sensation for folks. Like, everyone's grief is going to be different, no matter who you're grieving, like, the, your past self, even. Um, that's a big one I had to learn how to grieve and let go of. Yeah. Um, the thought, the self you thought you were or would be? Yeah. The person I thought I was, the person that I actually was, um, you know, the person I could have been, um, you know, kind of letting go of some of that, mm -hmm. which is part of that, you know, incomplete list of careers I thought I had. <laughs> you know, I mean, part of it is like one of my first careers that I actually really wanted was um, I wanted to drive a bulldozer. I didn't care what I was doing. I just wanted to be like on a demolitions crew, <laughs> driving a bulldozer, using a backhoe, swinging a wrecking ball. It was... That was like my thing. <laughs> That's a thing. What happened to that dream? It's still possible. I mean, that's that's the possible. Some of those things they are still very much possible. So how do we choose? How do we know? Okay, that's the thing I want right now. That's the thing I want to pursue right now. What what helps us? You know, get us gets us on that track. I think more nowadays. I want to be part of building stuff rather than taking it down. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah. As, as much as I want to go to Sudbury, take that coring, drilling, blasting course and learn how to like, you know, demolitions seems awesome. Like, don't trust me with C4 guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will probably use it wisely. <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> so then... The desire to build things up rather than tear them down. Where do you think that that kind of do we call it a calling? Is it a calling or is it just an inkling? What what do you think it is? And where and where does it come from now? Where did where what did it emerge from? I think part of it emerged from um, growing up and realizing where these cracks were that folks I loved kept falling through. Mm. So. You know, in my early 20s, you know, seeing a lot of folks, like, dying of completely preventable causes, mm. you know? Like, why do people need to die of ODs, you know? That's crazy to me. Uh, like, you know, brilliant lights snuffed out because there are systems that don't care enough about us, mm. you know? And the support and so, the access. Yeah. There's lots of, there's so many reasons. There's so many, yeah. And, you know, seeing all these places that I'm like, hmm, well, we could shore up that crack. Hmm, we could, we could repave over this section so that people don't fall over there. You know, making it, having a, a foundation for equity for all folks, you know, especially, I think part of it definitely, once I realized that I was on, you know, team queer, I was like, ah, I was able to scoot through life fairly easily as long as I pretended I was straight. Yeah. But, eh, you know, uh, things get a little harder once you out yourself as a marginalized person, right? Yeah. And it's definitely harder to be marginalized when you're very visibly so, you know, like, if you're part of a population who, say, wants their fishing rights in Nova Scotia, perhaps, yeah, you know, and all the bad crap that's going on down there, you know, like, it's a lot, I want to make things more fair for everyone, you know, equal, mm -hmm. equally able to be accessed by folks, so you know. Do you think, uh, like, in relation to that, it sounds almost as well like we've been talking about resiliency. It almost sounds uh, that there's a resistance piece there too. What do you think the relationship is 
for you between resistance and resiliency and that creative spirit, the building up the, you know, spirit? Well, I think that um, in order to do a lot of uh, stuff involving resisting oppressive sort of regimes and, and cultural biases and stuff like that, you have to know how to take care of yourself and your fellow resistors because it is exhausting work. It is freaking exhausting, you know, because folks are going to, like, whether it's microaggressions or it's, you know, police action or just the crushing weight of most of society not giving a shit. Um, pardon my swear. Uh, you know, it's, it can, it can make one very tired. <laughs> very tired. You gotta be able to take care of yourself and your fellows really well. Mm. Otherwise, you'll burn out and you won't be able to do it anymore. And this work needs to be done. Yeah. You know? Like, you know, marriage, like, gay marriage was a thing that came about while I was in my last years of high school and I skipped a lot of religion class while that debate was happening because I was like hmm do I want to hear a bunch of straight white children talk about my rights uh, not really because they have no freaking idea what they're talking about yeah they would not know who Marsha Johnson is if she hit them in the face with brick <laughs> so <laughs> Oh, there's so many questions in my mind right now. Oh, this is beautiful. This and folks, this is why we go over the hour limit that Instagram allows us. Um, True. So, yeah, the resistance. Sometimes when I think about resistance, it starts there, doesn't it? It starts with the valuing of self, in spite of the fact that I don't imagine like there were many resources for you in that classroom. I don't imagine there was anyone helping, supporting, advocating. Um, allyship probably wasn't uh, as much of a thing as we like to think it is now. I was in a Catholic school. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of that. There was a couple people being like, oh, well, I guess gay people are people. And then there was a whole bunch of them being like, well, why? Why can't, why do they have to call it marriage? I'm like... <sighs> I don't particularly ever want to get married, yeah. but I want to make sure that if I, you know, die suddenly, my, like, partner doesn't get kicked out of our house, you know? Because mm -hmm. if it's in my name, you know, and if they're not my wife, then legally, it would go to my next of kin, who, if this person isn't married to me, would be one of my siblings. And thankfully, my siblings are cool. <laughs> but like you know it'd just be a whole freaking kerfuffle yeah well that's a conversation about equity it's a conversation about uh it's not about matching sort of like those heteronormative things it's not about i desire that it's about just options and choices which is really about human freedoms and yeah they have that essential freedom to be ourselves yeah we like even mean we need yeah. to be heard we need to be recognized no matter who you are so for those exactly weren't we weren't yeah well heck even like with the disability rights like if mm. you are on odsp and you marry someone who isn't hi like you're like their assets are considered your assets therefore your income hi so in a recovery in a system that is so flawed and fighting because I, you're it's such a hugely important piece and anyone who's out there right now who's uh, active in activism, uh, hopefully they know this and they must have to practice this because that burnout, it costs, it costs, there's fighting. Um, and it's where allies come in handy, like being able to spell off for one another to be there to provide that support, that relief, because you can't uh, fight all the time, Yeah. right? And that's part of, that's actually part of my problem is that a lot of the time I feel like if I'm resting, I'm wasting my time. You know, I'm not, you know, out there, you know, definitely not throwing a brick through certain conservative community members 
you know, office windows, then I'm not doing enough. Yeah. And, you know, it's retraining that part of myself to be like, you know what? Taking care of myself is important. I am worth taking care of myself. That is like, I have that written on so many pieces of paper around my house. So I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> or, you know, even on my, on my little cork board of joy back here. Yeah. Arr. I wrote this guy out because it's something I need to remember all the time. Oh, it's backwards. Yeah. Um, I can make positive and healthy lasting changes because I need to see that every day. Yeah. Whether that be, I can make positive and healthy lasting changes in my own life or if that ripple effect happens you know into the lives of those i love into societal change like i need to remember that Mm -hmm. because like you know being visibly queer isn't always enough sometimes i gotta go write some you know emails to you know uh, uh you know parliament members and be like hey man this thing that's happening is not okay. You need to do something about it. Or, you know, the way that these people are acting is wrong Mm -hmm. and unfair. And you're supposed to represent all the people, not just, you know, rich business owning people. Yeah. You know? And I'm not going to shut up until you listen. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think that that fight, the the fight that you somehow found in yourself when no one else was fighting for you. Did you realize, well, did you realize that was a fight? Did you realize that, you know, when you were younger, that what you were doing was resistance or was it something else? One of the good things I can say for a Catholic school, Catholic school education was that they taught us very early about this concept called social justice. Hmm. And, you know, seeing what's wrong in society and being like, Hey man, you know, we should do something about this. Now, some of the causes they had, they grabbed the wrong end of the stick. Um, That's one way of talking about (laughs) They grabbed the wrong end of the stick on abortion rights, but anyway. Um, (laughs) But, like, that foundation of looking critically at society was really helpful for me. Hmm. Because it helped me, like, I remember in God, I was, I was like nine or ten years old when we started learning about the Holocaust and like right after we started learning about residential schooling in Canada and mm. the parallels were right there there it's genocide both times yeah you know what I mean yeah and that was one of the the big moments for me being like shoot this is wrong and we need to stop doing stuff like this to people wrong and that that little me in there kind of woke up and was like i can do something about this though Hmm. and you know each person you know each person might be a drop of water but you know water wears away the stones collect tide comes in every day baby the small actions add up everything adds up absolutely And knowing you're not alone, that's part of that resistance thing too, is recognizing that you, it might feel so many, so much of the time, like you're fighting on your own, that we're fighting on our own, but we are not the only one fighting for this. Can you, can you talk a little bit about uh, how you found like, um, again, revisiting that conversation about resiliency and creativity, Mm -hmm. like, how do you find your people? How do you find the people who will fight alongside of you to support you when you need to take a break? Because I think that's, you know, that's like you said, that is self-care. You can't do it all. You can't move forward on your own. Uh, I mean, you can move forward on your own, but it's, there are others there. I don't know. It's a lot easier when you got folks with you, I got to tell you. Yeah. So how do you find your people? How do you know? There might be folks and wanting, and wanting to, you know, step out on the journey for the first time. You never know. Uh, it's a lot of when, when you're new actually all through the process is a lot of reading, investigating, Mm. thinking, and, and then talking to other people about it because folks are more malleable than you'd think, you know, folks are a lot more giving and thoughtful than I think 
we're given credit for. Yeah. Um, you know, folks can change their minds if you present them with, you know, stories. Because not folks don't really react well to stats. They're like, oh, that's just numbers. Who cares? Mm-hmm. But if you tell them a story about, you know, this person's experience was this and it hurt them like this, people react and they say, well, that's not fair. That's not right. How, how can I help? And I get a lot of how can I help? Mm. And that's really cool. Because, like, you know, I am a queer person, but I'm a white queer person. So I have a, a little, I have that layer of privilege, you know? I get to be the white shield when I'm at a Black Lives Matter protest. Because I'm like, okay, cops are here. I'm in between them and anyone who's more likely to get arrested. White bodies to the front. Yeah. Mm-hmm. White shield! Yeah. You know? And, you know, I'm not afraid to get hurt for something I really believe in. Because I've been hurt for dumb things in the past. Mostly done to myself. Mm. So, I, you know, I, I, I look at who I used to be and how much I didn't care about myself and how that translated into not being as active as I wanted to be in creating societal change. And I'm like, hmm, we're not doing that anymore, you know? So in learning how to care for yourself, that enabled you to care more effectively for other people. Exactly. You know, I can be a better self. And that better self can go on to help other people be better selves. And part of that is through telling my story and having people be like, hey, maybe some of the things that we do consciously or unconsciously actually hurt people, you know, and maybe we should consider that more. You know, I remember being at the studio with you one day and there was someone there in the community who, uh, Again, at the, you know, at the studio, one of the things I love about you, that honesty, that centered, being centered in your own truth and being able to speak from that place of, you know, we use nonviolent communication at the studio as a principle. We try to practice it as much as possible. And that sense of when you said that or when you do that, it makes me feel this. And you, that self-care, all that work you've done for yourself, the hard work uh, has enabled you to speak so clearly to people and from the heart. So I've seen people change in that moment. I've seen them reconsider a thought or an opinion that just a moment before was carved in stone. And this is the way it is. It's absolutely this and nothing's ever going to change my mind. And then you having that courage to enter into the conversation, but also the, the compassion to speak to this human being, not as, you know, to, to respond to the human being in front of you and not the opinion necessarily. Yeah. And like when you share your heart, share that experience, I've seen them shift. That's the kind of change and human transformation that is so, so beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that I carry with me from, uh, you know, my time, my very brief time at the University of Waterloo, <laughs> um, I read a lot of books. Uh, not most of them weren't even for class. I'm going to be real. Uh, I was just, I was reading and drinking and that was basically it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Great. The reading sounds amazing. There was a 10 floor library. <laughs> I lived in it. I'm not even joking. Um, <laughs> but I read this excellent book by a Holocaust survivor named Eli Wiesel. Mm. And you know, um, God, where is it? I had, a, I had that quote handy. Um, something about oppression and, you know. Um, we can post it afterwards. If you want to make a post, we can share. Yeah, I can remember it later. But yeah, it was basically about, you know, every every little act you, you do is, you know, to, to better your life and someone else's life is so important, you know? Um, And we have to, oh, right. um, Staying neutral in the face of oppression, 
is um, standing with oppressors, you know, uh, to not act against oppression is just being complicit in it, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of one of those guiding principles for my life. Um, you know, like I'm an addict, you know, that's, that's just how it is, man. But I can use that story of who, you know, I was and how I can, how I managed to kind of work my way out of it, build my way out of that. I can use that to be like, hey, you know what would be really neato burrito? is not shaming people for a medical problem. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a moral problem, you know? Yeah. Like, Port- Portugal decriminalized all the drugs. All of them. And we're like, hey, you know what would be neat is safe, clean access to these drugs. And if you want to get off them, great. And if you can't, we're not going to treat you like you're less. Yeah. You're still, a person's a person. Yeah. You know, that's it. What is it? A person's a person, no matter how small Horton hears a who. <laughs> Dr. Seuss life. I learned a lot of good things from Dr. Seuss. <laughs> the literature. Also, they said, I would, I'd like to track them all and list them all. So far, they've been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have read obsessively. When I was young, my, a lot of my friends were books. I, yeah. yeah, I can relate to that. And books are still, yeah, books, ah, books. Right? It may be another reason we feel compelled to create zines and to make our own books. Like, tell our own story in the way that we, only we can tell it. Well, that's it, right? Like, when I was young, I thought I was going to be this, like, famous poet and, you know, get poetry awards and, and, Nobel Prize for Literature, and I have set my sights slightly less lofty these days. You know, yeah. I want to, I want to be, you know, an art therapist, and I want to change folks' hearts and minds to like one person at a time. I don't need to have a national or global stage. I just need a, you know, a, a little stage in a local coffee house so I can yell about poetry um, <laughs> and then uh you know talk to folks afterwards and be like hey yeah. you know it's these parts of you that other people say are wrong they're wrong not you yeah and this all the pieces matter all the pieces yeah. matter they all have something to contribute they all have something to say however they don't need to, if you don't want them in your life you don't necessarily need to have them at the forefront yeah yeah I think those dreams are beautiful. And hey, I don't, you know, who, you still might become that award-winning poet. Never say never. I think uh, following that path, following that heart, you never know. And like, that's a whole other conversation about how screwed up our culture's relationship is with success in the arts and productivity and blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. But and I mean, it brings back around to the publishing thing too. Right, 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 right. And ageism and like all these different things that are tied to it, sexism, transphobia, all the phobias. I like to think whenever that voice pops up in my head about this urgency to prove to be something by a certain age comes up. I always think of yeah. like Beverly Glenn Copeland. Do you know Beverly Glenn Copeland? Oh, I'll put up another link. So recently- Was she the one who painted? No, oh my God. She's Han. a musician, uh, Canadian, lovely, but only recently found uh, what our culture considers success in her 70s because someone in Japan found a tape that, that uh, she'd made and they fell in love with this and all the tapes sold out and they, they emailed her to say, do you have any more of these cassette tapes? And she was like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll share another link. There's a, the CBC did a lovely little documentary uh, as a part of, oh, what's that show called? Lovely, it's a lovely show. I'll post about it afterwards. But that's such a beautiful reminder. If anyone out there needs a reminder about just, ah, there we go. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yes, beautiful storyteller, magical human being, and trans. Yeah, right? Yes. Uh, this is a beautiful story of, thank you for correcting my pronouns in that. Um, he gets this, uh, and also speaking to that human being piece as well. Mm. 
connecting people through their humanity, looking for common ground. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's why I'm, I wanted to call this scene like the art of life in the darkness, like mm. because we all have dark points in our lives. You know what I mean? There's always stuff that we don't want to look at from our lives, you know, and this particular past six months has been a cultural shakeup. You know, in changing priorities for a lot of people. Because, like, until you're forced to stop, sometimes folks just do loo 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 through life. Yeah. And, like, guilty, you know? Me too. You know, I was like, I can just keep chugging along in the same direction without really thinking about it. And, I mean, I've had to try and do better with that because uh, as part of my mental health, um therapy piece has been doing a lot of like the, the cognitive behavioral therapy and dialectical beha behavioral therapy which is a lot of examining thoughts and challenging them yeah and examining feelings and being like okay how do these things affect my behavior and my mood um and how do i find more of a gray area between that black and white sort of thinking, which is again, you know, heck the binaries, right? Yep. And finding the comfort. Sometimes there'll be comfort. That's absolutely comfort. And there'll be comfort with the discomfort at times until we can, yeah. it turns into something else eventually, but it is a process and yeah. All yeah. And it's not an easy one. No, but it doesn't, not easy. It doesn't always mean unenjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like weirdly fun sometimes. Yeah. Because it's, it's sometimes for me, it involves like stepping back, not out of myself, but stepping back from myself a bit yeah. and being like, well, why do I think that? Yes. Well, that's also what I'm excited if you like the pursuing of the art therapy would be such an excellent thing. Anyways, not the boss of you, but I mean, it is <laughs> witness one another on our journeys and provide perspective uh, for folks who are in it. Right. And each one of us needs that requires that mirroring at one point or another in our lives i'm b it is 257 <laughs> every time mary every time <laughs> so okay uh let's uh, yes if you want to send any quotes you have or anything else you'd like to share with folks and if anyone else any last minute questions for b that are coming up here right now you can share them with us after we know how to we know how to find b uh yeah, I'm usually around. I mean, I'll be hanging out tomorrow in the comment section of the uh, uh, Wednesday live stream. Yeah, chatting with folks. So you can, you're welcome to join us there tomorrow at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. to 3, 3 p.m. on Facebook. Yeah. But B, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Mary. This is always fun to hang out and chat. And, uh, oh, man, talking about stories. Fantastic. We'll have you back again, of course. You're you're part of the living, so we appreciate you. <laughs> I'm part of the fabric of the community. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a, a somewhat cross-stitched member. And <laughs> a cross-stitched member. Okay, and you know what? Keep us posted about the zine so we can share it and get the word out when it's ready to go. And who knows, maybe a zine project will emerge from all of this, from this this chat today. You never know. We'll chat with people. That would be so cool. Anybody who has, like, fun zines, please, like... My handle on the Instagram, you see it here. Um, link me if you see any cool ones, specifically about like queer and trans issues and like disability justice and all that fun stuff. Black Lives Matter, all the all the activism -y things. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. So I will say goodbye so I can say goodbye to everyone. Be what a pleasure. Mwah. We'll see you. Mwah. Bye guys. Bye. <gasps> okay, folks. Woo! Only a few seconds left, I think. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And again, uh, if you'd like to chat with B, you're welcome to join our Facebook live stream pop-up art studio that we host every Wednesday on Facebook from 2 p.m. to 3.30. We also still have the Listening to Our Neighbors project over on Facebook. So if you live in Oshawa in a priority neighborhoods, we want to hear your voice. This is another form of storytelling. And we want to hear what it's like to live in your community, in your neighborhood. So if you haven't had a chance to participate in the audio survey yet, please do. You can find that link on our Facebook page 
as well. And thanks so much for everyone who joined in today, everyone who was there. Again, shout out, thanks for helping me uh, correct those pronouns. That's an unusual thing for me to do because I love them so much. Uh, and I'm gonna post that, we're gonna post all the things and share all the things so people can learn and follow and grow and appreciate our creativity. Okay, bye.